Hello everybody, I'm High Treason and today we're doing a slightly different video to what we usually do. Uh, reasons, but I'm not going to go into them, maybe I'll speak about them at the end of the video. I do have an announcement at the end of the video, it's a pretty cool one, so yeah, stick around when we finish talking about the thing we're talking about to hear that, see it, whatever. We'll get that. Anyway, let's just get on with this for now, get it out the fucking way. Games where you have to drive shit around are cool, usually. I never liked any of that Formula One type stuff, it's just boring. That aside, you can of course play almost any game with a keyboard and maybe a mouse, but unlike FPS games where this is invariably the best way, some games simply feel better with another controller type. Flight simulators feel better with a joystick, and in those games, the analogue movement of most joysticks is certainly superior to the digital control of a keyboard. If you bought a better joystick, you'd not only have this, but precise control of the throttle, and some sticks even had rudder pedals, if you wanted to be extreme. Not all joysticks are analogue, but that's a rather niche topic, and it's for another time, I guess. Maybe. Adventure games use the mouse almost exclusively, in fact, in point and click, they simply work better with a mouse, and they feel clunky if played with keyboards or gamepads or other controllers, and they were almost certainly designed to be played this way given they are called point and click adventures. Are you a doctor? Yes, girlie, as a matter of fact I am. I'm a qualified gynecologist. Now look out, I'm gonna have to do an examination. Platform games, on the other hand, work exceptionally well with a gamepad. The compact controls and ergonomic feel of a good pad are just what the doctor ordered there. These aren't written in stone, however, and sometimes unconventional means actually work better than you'd expect, and it might be different for different people. I'll actually discuss one such exception at the end of this video. Crap! Do it! For now, though, our focus is on the Sertec R100 steering wheel controller. This is a 15-pin version. A USB model was made, but I have no idea if it works the same way as this one. It should at least be very similar, and it looks identical on the outside. Naturally, steering wheels are intended for driving games or racing games, things like that. You probably wouldn't want to drive a car with a keyboard and mouse in real life, so why would you want to play a driving game with one, right? The wheel seems to be made of a fairly strong plastic, and so do the pedals. They're not very heavy, but they seem to stay in place quite well on the rubber feet and the wheel just clamp onto near enough any desk or similar surface very easily. No tools are required, just turn this mounting mechanism on the bottom. It's a bit like a G-clamp or something, I suppose. Wheels like the Thrustmaster T2 offered a gear stick, but I like the option this wheel offers. Paddles. Yeah, that's like a supercar, and as we're on a computer, it probably offers a faster reaction time if used for gearing. They don't feel very strong, but they don't really feel flimsy either. They seem to be adequate. Chances are, the wheel was probably one of the cheaper options at the time it was made, as Sertec controls usually weren't that expensive compared to their competitors, and the R100 seems to be their base model from the time. Even Sertec made more expensive wheels, seems this was the most simplistic. It seems quite substantial though, I, I don't think build quality is an issue here at all. The pedals are not half bad, they're a bit softer than maybe I would like or would have expected, but not to any level that really causes me any issue. They just go down a bit easier than anything I've driven in real life, in fact substantially easier, so it takes some getting used to. Then again, most of my driving has been done in really old vans and pretty big trucks, so that might well be a factor. The gas and the brakes, not to mention the clutch, which is an option absent from this particular controller, are certainly going to be heavier on a car transporter than they are on your 1990s Vauxhall Corsa. Unfortunately, I do have rather huge feet, which just kind of make it even more of a challenge. I mean, uh, what can we compare it to? Well, that's my foot next to a baby AT case, so yeah, <laughs> not exactly small. 
Question is, is it true what they say? Well, let's find it. No. <laughs> I'm not going to open this wheel to see the insides, but I don't imagine there's anything interesting in there to show you anywhere, so we're not losing anything. In fact, I imagine it'd be very simplistic in there for reasons we're about to cover in a moment. Plus the fact I've wanted a wheel for over 20 years, so I'm really not ready to break this one just yet. So now, connecting the wheel up. It's an easy one. Plug in the 15 pin connector, and then connect the RJ11 looking thing into the bottom of the pedals, so that they'll actually work and can communicate with the wheel. That's it. No power or anything to worry about. Everything just runs off of that one 15 pin game port. Pretty neat implementation, really. Setting up in the operating system is also very, very simple. Simply add a two-axis four-button joystick to the operating system's joystick applet in the control panel, and it's ready to go. I imagine it would be quite similar outside of Windows, but I haven't tested. Yeah, no proprietary drives are required, though. There's no bullshit here. It just works. As a result, I would imagine this 15-pin model works in DOS without any extra drivers. As long as your sound card or whatever game controller you have is working, then it should work in the games that support joysticks or other controllers. I mean, even games that aren't meant to be played with steering wheels, for example. Possibly. Now, this is why I envisioned the internal circuitry being very simple, because to all intents and purposes, it's just a regular pretty common run-of-the-mill configuration of joystick, uh, at least as far as the electronics are concerned and therefore as far as the computer it's connected to is concerned, there's really no discernible difference to the machine. For some reason it doesn't seem to work under Windows 2000 and I haven't tested an XP, so this is probably a Windows 9X only wheel at best. Uh, obviously DOS maybe as well, we'll, we'll get there later in the video. I can't speak for the USB version though. However, I do think that it did at least work in Windows 2000 and Certec offered the driver for it, but by the time you have USB, you've got a much wider choice of wheels, because most of the ones second-hand out there today are USB, and fair enough all the new wheels are going to be USB, so you might as well just stop looking at 15-pin ones if you're buying it for a newer computer, and that's an option. You can see in the applet how the wheel works. The pedals are analogue and they move the y-axis up for the gas and down for the brake. It, it rests in the centre when no pedals have been pushed. The wheel itself moves the x-axis side to side, which is what we'd expect. That, that just makes sense, basically, when you think about it. The buttons and the paddles just appear as buttons. Four buttons, and they're in an order that it's sort of like a clockwise rotation from the first paddle it's not really as numbered, but you'll figure it out pretty fast. It, it makes sense, I guess. Uh, it seems to work, at least here. So how does it handle in a fairly simple game where we have to drive stuff? Well, this is Test Drive Off-Road 3, and it's known as 4x4 World Trophy in my part of the world. It's a pretty cool bargain bin game, as in it didn't really cost a lot to buy the game when it was new, and it isn't really that complicated. It even has problems, but damn, it's fun, and it does what it says on the tin. Yeah, yeah, laugh at my hairdresser mobile, all you want. This is a game where you have to assign the controls in a menu, and not by operating the control and the game detecting it, as some games are. Obviously, the controller works fine here, because it just shows up as a regular joystick, so yeah, it doesn't have to have any exclusive support in the game. I mean, the game is pretty simplistic. It doesn't support analog brakes or accelerators, so as soon as it detects pedal movement, you're at full force, just like you would be with a control pad. So only this steering wheel is going to act like an analog control here. The game doesn't disclose this, of course. You'd have to find out for yourself. Probably something to do with the game seemingly being targeted more at PlayStation 1 players, and in that version, the gas and the brakes are buttons. The game was obviously available on the PS1, and it is about on par with the PC version, there's only minor differences. So, yeah, that, that seems to be a pretty decent theory, I guess. I have no idea if it supports PS1 steering wheels, though. Uh, I've never had one that actually worked, even in games that said they did, so who knows. But I guess you could probably use this wheel in an emulator. The PC version, however, does indeed work with this steering wheel. 
it takes some getting used to, but it's pretty fun to play with, and I think I might get used to it after you guys are playing with a controller. Oh man, that's one sorry controller. I mean, look at that, it's got erectile dysfunction. Look at that control stick. How I ever play anything with this is a mystery to me. <laughs> I seem to be adjusting to the wheel in this game quite fast anyway, so now I'll pull the rug out from under my feet. Oh, as a last note, the camera in this game resets with every race, but the wheel works with joy to key or similar software, so whilst I can't assign the camera to a joystick button in the game, I can assign it to emulate the relevant key press in some external software on an unassigned button, or just use the horn because it doesn't really change anything in the game. This is Street Legal. It's another pretty cheap game, but it's a very, very fun one, and it's a good one to demonstrate this wheel with. It's an easy game to screw around with, too. It utilises a very simple scripting language to define what cars can do and what they can't do, so, yeah, it's quite easy to mount a V10 in cars that shouldn't have a V10. Heck, put two of them in there, and, hey, while we're at it, why not put a V6 in and stuff the exhaust in the driver's face? Yeah, eat monoxide, you plastic-looking ugly twat! Fucking why mate, gonna swap me some cars and do burnouts in Mackie D's car park. Chavin it large dickhead. Also, top tip, start a game, save the game, and then open the save file that been main in a hex editor. And go to address 110, modify the data there to read FF 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 3B. You're now rich, enjoy blowing the money. If only you could do that in real life. I wish I could run a hex editor on real life, man. Things would be so much better. The game listens for controller presses and picks up the wheel just fine. It also supports analog accelerators and brakes. It even supports analog clutches and such, but the wheel offers no option for this kind of thing. If you had a second controller with different pedals, I suppose you could assign that. Or else you could get a different wheel that has more pedals. I don't care. Anyway, the bastard mobile is ready to go in all its garish pink glory. I got my body kit, I got my paint, I got my decals, and I got my crappy spoiler. This is a real chav car. It's going to pull me loads of birds because my brain isn't there and my penis doesn't work. I spent a lot of money on this car and I'm sure all this plastic crap and paint I've put on it with duct tape and super glue will make it go faster somehow. How does that analog gas pedal hold up in a game that can use it, though? That's the real question here. Oh, crap. Well, I guess I forgot something. Let's try that again with the rest of the engine actually installed in the car. You're fucking starting or something? Fucking yeah, mate. Fucking yeah. Fucking come on, fucking rev the balls off it, yeah! Fucking Wayne's got a new car now, you fucking knobhead! Now I've got a fucking license to fucking drive in that! Fucking yeah, you fucking dickheads! Fucking yeah, mate! Fucking ass! Fucking hell! Let's fucking end at that! Fucking shit fucking car. Fuck's sake. Yep, well, I guess that's the end of that motor. Ah, oh, well, we can repair that. But that gas pedal certainly seems to work as it should. You know what, forget repairing that. We're rich chavs now. Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you the wanker wagon. Fucking well, mate. Fucking yeah, dickhead. Gonna get all fucking bards in this car, mate. I fucking swear down. Fucking hell. It's fucking, this is, this is a fucking the pulling car, mate. It's all about the cars. It's all about the cars. Fucking speedy they call me, mate, because I'm quick as that mouse. What's from, what's from uh, Espanol or wherever he's from. Fucking well fast, mate. I mean, uh, you know, who's, who's saying, like, you know, oh, fucking weird, he ain't got a driving licence and... Fucking get out of the way, you fucking dickhead! Fucking hell! Fuck's sake! Hey, fucking hell, who the fuck's that? Man, it pick you oh, Fucking you, mate! Fucking that bird there! Fucking yeah! Fucking here, love! You wanna ride in my car? What do you want? Fucking hell! Must 
fucking need a bigger spoiler or something. I tell you what, I wish I'd bought a wheel years ago. I mean, this is awesome. And judging the fact I'm still playing, I'd say it certainly seems to work. The only things missing are the clutch and the force feedback, but I mean, this was a cheap wheel, so I really don't care. I don't really miss it at all. Fucking there he is. Fuck it. Fucking hell. Fuck's sake. It's only if I'm not playing and I sit there and think about the features that I start thinking, mm, yeah, maybe they could have put that, but it's a cheap wheel. For what it cost, I think I'm getting my money's worth and then some out of this wheel so far. Here's another driving game, Interstate 76, or more precisely, the Nitro Pack, which came out later than just playing Interstate 76. Sort of like an expansion pack that doesn't require the base game or something. One of those deals, who knows? bastardized Mech Warrior 2 engine is it's a bit of an oddball. Uh, this game doesn't support analog pedals and I'm very very doubtful of its analog steering detection. Nonetheless you can play it with this wheel. It works but it actually doesn't feel right here. Remember that exception to the rule talk I was waffling on about before? Well this is one of those. The wheel still feels fine, there's nothing wrong with it as such but it takes two hands to use it properly and my feet are using some of my concentration up to operate the pedals and this usually isn't a problem but I think the issue here is that the game has a lot of controls and you're inevitably going to have to use the keyboard at some point whether it be for NOS or especially in combat you're going to have to mess with targeting and all sorts of things uh, I mean, the, the keyboard is fine on its own for this game, but it doesn't always feel natural due to the fact we're in a car, well, mostly. This is one game where the wheel might be a disadvantage then, because it limits your access to the keyboard. Over the years i found an unconventional approach that works well in this game, namely it's a joystick. Wait a minute, it's a bit like a penis. The joystick still offers analog movement with a natural swear to it, so even if the game isn't detecting it, at least feels more natural on a tactile level, I guess, if that's the right word. But at the same time, it only uses one hand to operate a joystick, really, and it leaves my other free to use the keyboard for weapons, targeting and other crap that we mentioned before. It's not the wheel's fault, this game just simply doesn't seem to be built to work well with one. It's certainly doable, especially if you had a more expensive, more full-featured wheel. But to me, this is not a wheel game. This, this, this game is just not really geared up for being played with one. And I think you'll get a better experience using some other form of controller in this particular title. I do wonder if this works the other way though, perhaps there are games that you wouldn't think would be good with a steering wheel but might work well with one. I haven't found one yet but in the meantime it's kind of fun to play driving games with it. Plus it's actually fun to sit there playing games you're not really supposed to. Come on. Oh fuck yeah, impossible pogo trick with a fucking steering wheel man. <laughs> what other channel are you going to see that on? <laughs> I mean, seriously. Uh, is it a good idea? Uh, no, but it's a pretty fun one. <laughs> it adds a new challenge to a game where I otherwise would pretty much master. <laughs> This is, this is just a bit brick precarious. Oh, I don't fucking burn out in dumb, mate. Uh, fucking balance. No, it's on played at a pretty easy difficulty here. Oh, fuck this. Barrel, super barrels. To work. Uh, imps give me gas. Imps give me gas. 
it's time to blow up some stuff. <laughs> the fact Doom was running on my Pentium 66 in pure DOS would suggest the wheel does definitely work in DOS. I think it's also a testament to how comfortable it is that I forgot to mention it earlier in the video, but it does fit in my hands really well and the buttons and paddles are always well within reach. So then, this R100 is a pretty good wheel. There's certainly going to be more full-featured wheels out there. Sertac certainly made some. Uh, this appears to be the, the cheapest and simplest model they did. But, hey, if you see one going at a good price and you want to play some driving games on an older machine or something, well, yeah, pick it up, man. It, if it's going at a good price, I mean, yeah, it, it sure as hell seems like a, a good wheel to me. I haven't really had any problems with it. And uh, when I was playing Doom, we were running on my Pentium 66 in pure DOS, no additional drivers or anything. It just comes as a joystick to the machine. So yeah, you could probably use it with old, old computers, like real old stuff, and make it work in real old games. Emulators will pick it up. So that test drive off-road 3, yeah, we could actually use it in the PlayStation version in an emulator, which that Athlon I was using is powerful enough to run. In fact, we played the entirety of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets on a PlayStation emulator on that, on my second channel. So, yeah. Of course, if you don't have any games you want to play with the wheel, you know, even if you want to be silly, play it on, like, Doom. I'd love to see someone complete Doom with one. I might have to give that a go on a uh, Twitch livestream someday. Who knows? But, yeah, I'd love to see someone complete. But if you don't want to even do that, you, and you can't think of a use, then, yeah, it's probably a waste of money. But if you think you've got a use for it, and you see one going a good price, then pick it up. I don't think it'll go amiss. Uh, I said I had announcements, well I've got a couple of them. Uh, first one I'm going to say is... Wait, well, hang on a minute, I forgot something. I've left a link in the description to just outside of my old house on Google Street View. And until Google update the images there and on the satellite view, you can still see my old house and you can wander around my old neighbourhood. And I thought it might be fun to put it there. Because, you know, you can see where I grew up and where I moved back to when I left social services and where I made YouTube videos for the past eight years or so. Uh, I, I don't think it's any real issue that information been public now, you know, and people who are determined to find you have a knack of doing it anyway. So, yeah, I mean, you know, I'd rather people didn't, but <laughs> I don't think there's any harm in putting that information out there now. Anyways, yeah... Back to the video as uh, well. Look, just forget this sloppy editing and my forgetfulness ever happened. The one you probably wouldn't expect of me, but I've been like kicked off of pretty much every vintage computing forum there is around. Uh, and I'm not even going to name them, but yeah, fuck those forums, man. I'm, st I'm starting my own. So as of this video going up, that is live. And I don't expect anybody's going to join the thing, but I'm going to leave you a link to it, and I'm going to keep plugging the hell out of it for a while. Uh, but if it goes nowhere, I don't care. It, it was a fun experiment to set up. I like screwing around with this stuff. And, well, you know, it doesn't hurt for it to be there. It's not cost me anything. You know, it's just a different virtual machine on a connection and the hardware that was already there. Server is going to need some... Uh, patching up so it's gonna probably drop offline at some point in the coming months for a few hours but yeah I don't know and I would personal that beforehand so yeah uh, much more open than your average computing forum you know this isn't some kind of fascist regime my rules are damn near non-existent so if, uh, you want to go over and speak about computing and stuff and of course uh, I'll be posting I'll, I'll be moving my blog on there and I'll be updating things a lot more often uh, in fact, I, I kind of wonder if uh, you'd like me to video stuff more often as well, like make casual unscripted videos, because they won't affect these. I film it anywhere, so maybe I can start doing them unlisted there, you know, just posting them there and unlisting them on YouTube so you can have a look, and if you want me to just post them publicly on YouTube, I guess I could start doing that. You know, just small things like replacing a video card, upgrading some memory, things like that, don't really warrant a full-feature scripted video. So yeah, that's there. And of course, if you just want to shit post in my off-topic section or post fucking titty pictures or something, go ahead. I, I don't care. That sort of shit's allowed on my board. It's my server. I, I can do whatever the hell I want, basically. And uh, I extend 
the invitation to everybody out there who has an interest in it. But like I say, if it goes nowhere, I, I don't care. I'm not losing anything. It, it was fun to mess with. So, yeah, there's that. Just a bit of fun. Let's see what, what happens with it. And the other thing is, you might have noticed there's been this rather large black and silver case throughout the video. Well, that is the Intel Xeon. And it is running. And uh, this video, there's a good chance it's going to be edited on it. And I'm just going to access the resources off of the Pentium D over the network. It's gigabit Ethernet, so it should be quite fast. Uh, it can get the video there at the resolution I've recorded just a bit quicker than real time. That Xeon can render it faster than that white can puke it out. So, yeah, this thing's going to be pretty beastly when we get it going. The only thing is, I've had the capture card I've got is brilliant. StarTech, the only company who replied, and so I've bought their capture card, the PEX HD Cap 2. The only issue is that in VGI DVI capture, there's no breakout for the audio. And I'm working on a solution. I don't want to modify and I think if I use a DVI splitter, there's uh, this... Ooh, do I have it around? I had it here, but I might have put it away somewhere. I think I used it to prop some up. There it is. Um, yeah, they have this breakout, because it's just a DVI port in the back of the card, but they have this. And it does appear to listen to this input, but it's in DVI mode. And if you hadn't noticed, we've got a new scaler. Same model as the old one, seems to have a slightly upgraded firmware. I'd like to see if they're interchangeable, but hey, the old scaler was stolen, so we won't be doing that, will we? But what I think we might be able to do is, you know, plug this thing into one of these, uh, that's one of so much slightly crooked here, and then plug the scaler into that. But this splitter doesn't work, and I'm going to have to send it back, so I don't know. If it doesn't work, we'll have to mod the board and just make our own breakout, I guess. But that's fine, we, we can do that. Uh, yeah, a bit idiotic of StarTech there, but it seems to have been fixed on newer models. The HD Cap 60L has it, but I, I don't know if it supports the capture resolutions that we use and stuff. It doesn't work so well with VGI on all the computers, which is why we need the scaler sometimes. I'm going to get a switch box so we use the scaler as little as possible, you know, so I, I can switch it over and it will bypass the scaler and we can drop back to VGA mode. Uh, we could actually just get VGA out of the scaler, actually, and I might look into doing that. It would make switching it a lot easier. And we'll see what happens. It's uh, a thing for the future. But the machine's certainly working. So, yeah. And what that means is I'd love to do a video on the Athlon I used a lot today, and I was going to do it, but it's been so hard to film, and I, I wanted to get something done, so I, I started focusing on this video instead. Uh, I don't know what all of this is going to happen in, so that I want to do a video on that Athlon, because that is a fucking awesome machine, it is it? It is awesome. Like, uh, it's going to change to a different case. It's in my old Athlon's base case, which it, it, it cannot contain the heat the thing kicks out. It's a very fast machine, a very odd processor, and a, <laughs> a legendary video card. And it, it's, it's made out of the stuff I wanted back in the day, and fucking hell, things would have, like, I'll tell you now, things would have been different if I'd have had that back then. You know, maybe the Pentium D wouldn't exist. Who knows, because I would have probably still been running it, like, for a long time. That would have been a capable machine for a very long time. Uh, it needs a, a few things tweaking, but yeah, I mean, we're, we're going to have a look at it at some point. I want to do a video on New Xeon, obviously, that's a given. It's not, that won't be a particularly interesting system, that's the problem. Modern computers are pretty boring. And so I may do it in the same video as my Pentium D, or I may do them as two separate videos and try and get them both done and upload them together. Which I actually think could be quite interesting, because I have plans for continuity with those two anyway. As, you know, it's like the changeover between the workstation. We've used that Pentium D for over 11 years now. I mean, geez, man, that thing's got some miles on the clock, and it shows. That thing's ugly, and it, it doesn't run as good as it used to. It's a little bit... Yeah, it complains a bit. Uh, but it's still going for now, and the data's backed up, so... You know, we should be good. There's two arrays left to back up. Uh, I've been going through... I've got 10 terabytes of data to go through, and manually erase duplicates. and It's a bit of a handful, but... Let me turn this monitor off, it's whistling and it's annoying me. But, yeah, we certainly, you know, we're, we're moving off of it. And it's going to be a sad day when, when it's uh, 
finally no longer the main work station, but yeah, you've got to move with the, the times. You've got things that have to have to change. That's the way things are. You know, it's the way things always been. You can't stay the same way forever. You know, everything changes, you know, people, objects, the universe, it's always moving and that's that's the way you've got to be with things. And that's, I think, some of what we, we capture on this channel is how technology changes over time. Now, I'm, I'm quite proud of this channel. It's come a long way from just a jerk in college, hasn't it, really? You know, it was just a, a jerk and a, there's, like, dialogue in early videos and stuff that people outside of, like, who I knew back then just wouldn't get. <laughs> and uh, those those videos were just retarded, man. I leave I leave them around because it's just history. But yeah, uh, <laughs> no, not not good. Please don't dig those. Up. <laughs> that's a sign. That that's that's evidence that people change. I think, and that's as a result of the world and everything. It's it's an interesting effect. But yeah, well, we have uh, come a long way since then, and the most awesome part of it is my audience, you know, and I don't consider you an audience as such. Yeah, an audience, but I consider this is more of a community, I, I really do, because it saddens me when I see other channels and people write in the comments, like, you know, referring to the person who uploaded the video as an outside party, and it's not addressed to the person who uploaded it because they know they won't get a response, it probably isn't going to be read. Or people bitching about the comments not working, but yet they don't reply to comments, so it's like, we obviously got time to read them, so it's not a time constraints thing. Some channels it is, I'm a bit lenient on those, but, you know, or if they have loads and loads of comments, stuff like that, but, yeah, that, that upsets me. There's none of that here, you know. To me, audience interaction is just as important, if not more important, than the video itself. And the reason my videos are as good as they are compared to what they was is because I listened, it's because people had the balls to sit there in my comments and be like, I don't like this watermark, I don't like the camera work, you know, you need to fix this, and give valid and constructive criticism, and I listened, and somebody takes time to write a comment, then they've took the time to watch my stuff and write a comment, and it's only common manners that I give some of my time back, isn't it? Might not always reply straight away, it might even take me weeks, but I, I, I try and get there most of the time. However, there's some people where I, the replies don't work, and yeah, check your settings, you know, if, I, if I'm, you're not getting replies out of people, have a look in your settings, because there's some of them where I just can't live, I press reply and the comment just, nothing happens, the comment box sort of flashes out for a second, comes back, I can't post it. But yeah, uh, you know, it's really important. I mean, there's... There's instances on this channel where, you know, I know, like I say, I really respect it that people in the comments section can do this stuff. It's the point of the internet. This is what the internet's all about. You know, there was a, a dude uh, went off, you know, watched my videos, learned from them, came back, and then told me why I was wrong about something in one of my videos from his own research based, uh, at least in part, on things I'd done. And it's like, that's awesome, you know. Some people would be throwing their dummy out, which people say, you know, I'm wrong. I actually think that's really good. You know, that's that's what the internet's all about. It's, you know, an ever-improving thing because everybody in the community chips in their bit and contributes in that way. And that's amazing enough. And that's one of the reasons, you know, I don't ask for money and stuff because I don't need it. That's, that is better than money, that kind of stuff, the audience interaction. And I'm an antisocial dickhead. So, I wonder what that says, really. <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't plan to go on that long-ass uh, speech, pouring out bloody sentimentality and stuff, but uh, it was, some of that was on my mind, just the thing about people who never reply and stuff, and I think I might as well get it out of my system at the end of this video. <clears throat> Pardon me. Yeah, stomach. Medications. Not kicked in yet, but I accidentally took double the dose, so yeah, I don't know what that's going to do. I'm supposed to go to A&E, but it's a dose that some people take, and I've been on it for a long time, so my tolerance is going to be good. I, I don't think it'll do anything. I hope it won't do anything. <laughs> if, if you never see another video of me, I guess you know why. <laughs> uh, 
No, it, I, I must think it'll give me diarrhea or something. <laughs> I don't even think it's going to do that. Like I said, my tolerance to it's going to be insane now. The tachyphylaxis is pretty fast on on it. And it's really interesting because the, the medicine itself, it tastes like burning circuit boards, burning fiberglass. It really does. If you light a circuit board on fire or one burns out, that's what it tastes like. Uh, that and cheap whiskey because there's a lot of alcohol in it. You know, I'm consuming a decent portion of about a pint of lager every time I take it. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. But oddly, I'm not supposed to drink alcohol when I'm. Yeah, go figure. <clears throat> But yeah, the Satek R100, brilliant wheel. The Athlon machine, brilliant machine. My well, Pentium 66, yeah, it works with the wheel. And that Xeon, that thing kicks ass. And it's really hard to film in here, but this video seems to have kicked my... It was hard to find motivation. I think this video will kick it back in place, especially once I get started editing. So obviously I've done no editing yet. Also, I got a new synthesizer and I... Right at the end of the video, I'll give maybe a little sample of what it sounds like. And tell me if you can guess. I'll give you a shout out in the next video if you can guess what it is. I know some people know what it is and I remember who you are, so no cheating. But yeah, I'll leave you after my logo runs. Just a little sample of what it sounds like. And well, we'll, we'll see if you can guess what synthesizer it is. But otherwise, I'm High Treason. Thanks for watching. And hopefully I'll see you again in the not too distant future. Okay, so this is a sample of the synthesizer. Yeah, it sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? Uh, so, leave your guesses in the comments. I'm, I'm sure somebody, at least someone, will get it. I think a lot of people will. That's a pretty signature sound of the 80s, definitely. Of course, now you know it has to be from the 80s or before. See you around. I'm High Treason. Thanks for watching.